Who's into there? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna engage today, and it's all about learning. So if we wanna have learning, what are what are we going to have? What we should have? Fun. Fun. <laughs> so starting with fun. Fun. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, if you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you so much uh, for attending today. Thank you, Stuart, for uh, inviting me to present you today. So today it's about um, achieving business freedom. It's about generating predictable cash flow into your business, OK? Um, we're going to tell you how we go about it. But before we start, I would really like to know why did you come to this event and what would be uh, your take up of this event? So if we can start by raising hands. Yeah, Amanda? Hi. Um, this is all very new to me, okay. um, the business world, the mm -hmm. corporate world. Um, I threw my job in two months ago because I had a belief in something and, and took that leap of faith. And now I'm finding myself, I'm constantly going to my daughter saying, well, what's this and how do I do this online and marketing? And they get a little bit impatient with me. <coughs> I have to remind them who taught them how to hold a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trust me. So it's all the, very alien for me, but I obviously, you know, I have to get myself out there to get my company uh, into the business world. Okay. Well, it's just cash flow. Can you just say your name, please? So it's uh, Andrew Gunn. Andrew, thank you for coming, Andrew. Okay. Um, so, so the advert that I saw on my Facebook page somehow was uh, basically telling me that you were going to show us how to improve our cash flow. And that's uh, what I mean. Okay, we've touched that. Yeah. It's all about the money, yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, ben, I yeah. presume. So, um, what would you like, what's your take out of this? Uh, pretty much what Andrew said, you know, the whole point of our business is trying to find different ways of um, yeah, making the the business work in a different way, so yeah, cash flow is kind okay. of one of the key things. Brilliant. What's your name? Kaya. My name is Kaya. Kaya. Um, I recently started my um, business okay. about six weeks ago now. It's not very long, and I um, <coughs> I wanted. I've start, I've had. I've done. I've had many ventures in the past. But I've always had an issue when it comes to generating predictable cash flow. I've. I feel like I've done the marketing side of my business now. Mm -hmm. But it's now coming to the accounting side where I don't have enough knowledge or understanding to understand how to generate a predictable cash flow and okay. work it in the best way possible. Right. Excellent. Sarah, I presume. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess for me, uh, cash flow is the main thing as okay. well. So I am um, a coach. And you are a coach? Yeah. And okay. I guess one of the things with coaching is, is that what sort of a coach? Um, so I'm a life coach life and coach. I'm also a financial coach. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, just getting the consistency really because some months are really great and then certain periods of the year as well um, mm -hmm. can be very good. Okay. Um, so it's just that, yeah, I guess. Thank you. Tom? Yes. Um, again, of course, tips on the cash flow and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, networking as well. Okay. Uh, really? Probably the main reason here. Yeah, right. networking. Um, sorry, I didn't get your name. Uh, Tom. Tom, can you tell us what what's your what do you want to take out of this uh, workshop today? Yeah, it's also the cash flow. Cash flow. Okay. Richard. Uh, why am I here? I'm here because Jerry told me to come. Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm here mainly to network, I guess, network. and also to learn about cash flow. Okay. Uh, JJ. Um, Don't say no, I told you to come. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made me do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, the um, uh, main reason for me was about cash flow and networking as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was interested in the predictable part of the cash flow. Okay. Fine. <coughs> yeah, Look, it's free. Use my cash flow. <coughs> <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> um, I have sort of mixed net return on investment. Okay. Uh, I forgot the name. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a colleague of Kelly Overtime, also a business coach, so I'm here to support. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you. Your name? Sara. 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 Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I also want to know uh, the role of the cash flow, especially when you start a new business and at the first stage of the Excellent. business. Is it okay if I tell you how we're going to run the session today? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, I'm just going to tell you, start uh, a little bit about uh, Action Coach and um, a little bit about me. But uh, the little bit about me you have uh, in my bio in your uh, booklets that are on your table. And then we're going to talk to you about uh, the, um, the predictable cash flow, how you actually have a good return on investment and how to generate that uh, uh, right cash flow. Um, I'm going to tell you about some of the products that uh, I'm offering and I'm going to tell you a little bit in detail towards the end about a specific product. Um, I'm going to show you also the magic formula on how to grow the, uh, the business and then uh, we're going to end and um, it's going to be uh, about networking as well. So we'll have the opportunity, if we have the time also for each one of you to actually pitch their business uh, towards the end of uh, this meeting. Is that okay to work along those lines? Yeah? Brilliant. Okay, so a um, little bit about Action Coach. Action Coach is the world number one business coaching firm in the world. Uh, actually, the, um, the uh, owner of Action Coach, uh, Brad Sugars, is the one who has started the business coaching profession uh, in uh, Australia. And uh, our head office is currently in Las Vegas in the uh, US. We operate in 87, 88 different countries because there is just one more country that has just started a couple of weeks ago. Um, with, uh, we work with uh, more than two th uh, 20,000 businesses uh, on a weekly basis, with more than uh, two coaching uh, offices around the world. So um, I'm not an employee of uh, Action Coach, but I'm uh, an Action Coach partner. I'm a franchisee of uh, Action Coach. Um, our vision um, as an Action Coach is world abundance through business re-education. And uh, we have matched values with Natalis. Thank you, Stuart. Um, just a little bit about me, um, uh, 27 years of direct experience in international <coughs> markets, uh, business development, marketing, media, I worked with SMEs as, long, uh, as well as uh, global companies, uh, similar to McDonald's, uh, General Motors, Ford, Mars, married to Sarah, I'm a business owner, I'm a coach, a trainer, and a mentor. So um, these are some of the uh, how we can help you. Uh, we hold uh, training and workshops about uh, different things, about teams, about finance, about um, sales, um, about time, different uh, workshops. We hold group coaching um, sessions as well with business owners. Um, one of a uh, couple of my clients are here today, so I thank you for attending, Gary and uh, JJ. One-to-one uh, -one coaching as well. And uh, we also hold a growth club, which is a 90-day uh, planning, which is something that I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, in detail later on. So what is our definition of um, a profitable business or a successful business? It's a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. So if it doesn't work without you, then it's not abundance. So it has to work really without you. Uh, what is your most valuable asset? Who's busy mm -hmm. in their work? Raise your hand. Excellent. <coughs> business is about, it's not about being busy. Actually, business doesn't start with the Y, it's with the I. So it's business. So time is our valuable asset. It's something that we cannot get more of. We can have more money, but we cannot actually have more time. So we have to be aware of our time and actually make the best out of it. And thank you uh, for attending here today. There is a guaranteed learning for each one, for each and every one of you to um, compensate for their time. Um, the keys to business success are leverage, people, systems, technology, and sales and marketing. And in our presentation today, it's more about getting the return on investment and the sales and actually having the right 
cash flow in the business. Um, we're not going to cover the cash flow into details. This is going to be our next session in, uh, on the 24th of uh, October. But we're going to touch on uh, the different aspects of it, on how to generate it. So um, just a little bit of the housekeeping on myself. Don't mind me uh, sweating. I don't actually sweat. I rain. Uh, <laughs> this is um, um, I have something that actually I, I can't do anything about. It's in my DNA. So uh, if you see me sweating, um, I'm absolutely fine. But uh, I, I'm not afraid. I'm not tense. But this is the way because I move a lot. So I actually do. So thank you for understanding. Um, so actually. The six steps to uh, a master business or, or to a better business, it starts with, so a quick question. If, it, if you're starting your business, what is the first thing that you start working on? Action plan. Okay, so action plan. Uh, I like the action plan because it, it resonates well with action coach. But um, <laughs> so um, so action plan, a business plan. What else? Marketing. Marketing. Okay. Funding. Brand. Funding. Brand. Mm -hmm. What else? Products or offer. Products or offer. Any other ideas? Infrastructure. So basically, we start with the foundation. Is that correct? Yeah? yeah? So basically, what you're doing, you're digging yourself a hole. <laughs> so if we start with all of these, we're actually digging ourselves a, a big hole. And then the deeper the hole is, means that you need a lots of our services actually to help you go out of it. So the first thing that we start when we go into business is with a very simple thing, with the end product. with our vision. What do we expect our business to be? Not in five years, not in 10 years, probably in 100 years. Yeah, we'll not be in here on this earth, but this is our legacy. So basically, we start with our vision and we work backwards. Because when we work backwards, actually we know where we're heading. And then we can go to NatWest and tell them, this is our plan. How can you partner with us to actually help us meet our vision? And this is exactly what we do in here. We actually define, the first step is defining your vision. And we help you setting the right set the right foundations for your business so that it can reach that commercial profitable enterprise that works without you which is ultimately your vision. So six steps. First one is to have the stability, the niche, which is the predictable cash flow, which is what we're going to talk about today. Leverage, it's about systems. We're going to talk about this in November. Um, a great uh, running team, great systems. This is the team. We're going to talk about it at the later stage. Then synergy, which is a commercial, profitable enterprise that works without you. And then off you go. You can just have the passive income. Um, sorry. So thinking about your business. When you think about your target market, all of you are in business, okay? So do you grade your actual clients? Who grades their clients into categories? Okay? Hmm. 
some hands. So what do I mean by that? I mean grading them into A, B, C, D clients. What does that mean? And why did we say educate, promote, or remove? A clients are good payers, so there is no issues with cash flow, quite profitable, they don't require lots of our time to service them. B, not as profitable or they don't consume lots of our time, <coughs> but still they are good clients to keep. C, are demanding clients, very low margins. And D, are the nagging, never satisfied clients, always unhappy, never pay on time. So this is where we say, educate. Your A clients, you need to always educate them at value. B, you actually need to promote, promote, promote them to actually become better clients. And this is where you add value into your business by actually meeting their vision and your vision. And C and D are clients that are probably you should drop. This is your choice. If you can promote them through different clients, through different products, through different things that you are um, doing, then absolutely fine. But this is your plan on you should drop these C and D clients which are not profitable and actually they drain your time. So um, customer profiling, this is the usual ways that we talk about our customers because before we go, we've said we've talked about brand, we've talked about we've talked about brands, we've talked about products. So these are things. So who are our customers? We might have different customers, different customer base. So what is our definition for each customer base? This would, what would this allow us to do? Uh, Utilize time more efficiently. Yeah. How we can? Describe, describe, the customer. describe our customers. Which, what we will do out of that? Target them. Target them better. Yeah. Focus on the right customers. Focus on the right customers. Yes. Any more ideas? Finding the right marketing media. Finding the uh, right uh, media, uh, marketing media, which would give us what? A good return on investment. So usually the, the traditional things that we uh, actually look at are age, gender, income, occupation, values. So for example, when I did the Facebook campaign, thank you Andrew and Ben for attending, I've targeted business owners. I've targeted uh, both males and females. Um, the geography, the location, I've targeted Watford, which is around those area, two miles around Watford, um, etc. And I've also uh, targeted business owners, directors of companies. <coughs> you can also target them by um, sociographics, like hobbies, like um, whether uh, if you have a product that appeals to families, if they are married, if they have children, uh, what sort of a lifestyle? If your product is sports active, then you will be attracting those who are interested in sports, and so on. Um, what sort of, uh, what is the use of, uh, um, whether they use car, bike, or um, public transport? Why do we need that? For example, yes, but this is also it will allow us to profile our customers to know where to reach them, how to target them. There are so many different ways of targeting our customers and growing our business, which we're going to talk about later on in the presentation, which we expect to finish in by 11.30, 11.35. .30, and this is something that we are going to talk about, about different ways. But what is the main factor that we should look at when we're using any marketing initiative. Return on investment. Return on investment, that's key. How do we do that? 
measuring, testing and measuring. We don't have to spend a lot, but we have to spend wisely. We have to make sure that every penny that we're spending, how much we're getting back? Double. Double. At least the same. At least our investment. At least. But in principle, we should get 10 times what we have invested. Yeah? Um, we, there are, we should look at different other criteria, like the way that they spend, uh, what sort of volume purchase, um, necessity or luxury purchase, high tech, low tech, healthy, unhealthy. What would this allow us to do, other than customer profiling? Yeah, it would give us also, um, allow us to sell them more products. To know what sort of products would appeal to them. If they are not sports active, it's not good to uh, sell them something that requires, um, that is for high uh, athletes, for example. So we should appeal within, we should talk the same language. We should actually communicate in the best way possible to actually um, help them wisely guide them to actually purchase our product. Okay? So a quick recap, who are your current customers? Why do they buy from you on your tables? Uh, just a few things, who are your competitors? Who are they targeting? Who are their current customers? What product services do you provide? <coughs> Who needs them? Just write down your top five customers. And I would like you to share a few thoughts on these five questions. Just five minutes, please. Go ahead. Any shares, please? <coughs> Any thoughts? Yeah, so we have a problem because we're not probably like a lot of your, Sorry. your people here. With our customers, we don't really choose. They come to us. Buy? Well, they will buy online from us. Normally. Okay. So I know we can market to some of the groups you talked about. But so we decided that the people that the top five or our A grade customers for us are people with high incomes, disposable incomes, because our products are household based, we've got to have our household with a decent garden and so on. So rather than profile the specific name, we've profiled the type. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. This is absolutely fine. Yeah. Because at least when you're doing uh, what Andrew's saying, we're not going specific, but it's a little bit wider 
but more specific to the products that they have, and they should have, sh they should be, they target them more in the social economic, so in terms of their income, probably, yeah? Uh, online users, but there are so many different ways also to actually market your product since you have known who is your target. Yeah, yeah. even <coughs> when you do that, you have very little control about who you actually reach. I mean, look, you reached us. Um, do you ask your clients on how did they get to you? Yes. You do. Okay. So you have some idea. And also, obviously, with the online analytics, you can track that back mm -hmm. very well as well. Okay. It's all about testing and measuring. It's also, uh, it's always about knowing what are the numbers and where they are coming from. Yeah. I think, um, I think yeah. it's probably fair to say that the customer is the hardest part of the job. And for every, for every business. And you know, you hear that joke, don't you, that the job will be okay without the customers. <laughs> <laughs> Any other shares? Sure. Yeah? Um, LinkedIn is quite new, but okay. uh, that's about the jewelry. Jewelry? Yeah, okay. so uh, I target the ladies, uh, because it's 24, yeah. 50, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but it's not just the So culture, gender? Some men might want to be buying for themselves, you never know. Again, but here, what is important, uh, just a, a, a quick thing, the medium is always great, but you cannot judge on the um, success of a medium, just it worked or it didn't work. There are so many factors that are involved mm -hmm. that would help you actually either succeed or fail. Mm -hmm. The, just a quick example, the medium is the message. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination. So if whatever the medium that you're using, it should appeal with a specific message to that specific target. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. That's correct? Yeah. That's right? Yeah. Um, any other thoughts? Yeah? I can give you all insight in the past <coughs> seven years. Very good. My customer are people who drink water. Come in. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Customers who drink water. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Is it coming? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I, I says it is uh, global. Everyone will drink water. Dehydration. See, I don't know. You know that. Yeah. Uh, because this water I'm talking is a Japanese technology. It's been proven for 45 years. Okay. Okay. My customer. Are Average. It's not say I don't need to have a very rich or poor. They should be around for. They see the value. So they are under. So uh, uh, age uh, and then um, health awareness. Yeah. Health okay. Health, exactly. So again, here we're using different things. So what we've talked here about, we've talked about gender, we've talked about income, we've talked about uh, health. So there are so many factors that we need to look at when we're pitching our products, but the most important is each segment would be reactive more to a specific message. It's not, there is nothing that is universal, a one single message that would work for all, okay? So different messages on different products, it would be much more um, actually appealing. And this would take us actually into your When you're selling a product, what are you competing with? How do you pitch? What, who can tell me um, how do you sell your product? On what? Just I need the factors. I, I, Price? I, I do the event to show. But what are the factors? Uh, price, quality? Specifications. Specifications. So our definition of a successful business is no price competition. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do I mean by that? So if you're if you're selling your uh, what's what sort of line of business you're in? Cars. Why are you selling cars? Cars. So if your margin, let's say, uh, if you're selling a car for a thousand, okay, someone offers the same car for nine hundred, and then you will drop the price eight fifty, and then it's not a 
It's not sort of you can drop your price over and over again because that would leave you with no margin. And that would leave you actually with no profitability in your business. It's, the art, it's not about selling. It's not about selling our products. It's actually about selling them profitably. So that, because we need to have some fruits on our table as well. Okay? So this is our definition of a business. It's no price competition. And by no price competition, this is what I'm gonna touch on in my next slide, which is the unique selling proposition. So if we have a unique selling proposition, so there is someone that is calling you on the phone, hi, um, my name is X and I wanna buy this product. How much is it? So basically, what is their main thing? He's evalu he or she, they are evaluating you basically on one element, which is price. They don't know you. They have no clue of your services. What is your edge? So you need to actually educate your client. You need to tell them more on how you can add actually value. That's why I do event. Mm -hmm. Because in the event you show, you start to feel you can. This is one, one element, thank you, yes. Okay. So basically, you need to have an edge. Who knows what is the, uh, the unique selling proposition of Domino's people? 30 minutes will come back. 30 minutes delivery or my back. It has, nothing <laughs> to do, it has nothing to do with uh, pizza. It's not about the freshness. It's not about the ingredients. It's about delivery. Something that nobody has claimed. It might be obvious, but no one has claimed. So you're the first person to shout about it. Don't know this to me. Yeah. Yeah. Also about um, passion and, and, and belief. We talk about it a little bit into uh, detail, but it's in how you pitch your business to, to people so that they actually find value in it mm. other than price. Other than price. This would give you money into your business. So the POD is point of difference. So what is our USB as what is our USB as action coach? We have a strategic partnership with Natrace. We offer a guarantee on our services or your money back. And we are a CPD provider. But our main guarantee is money back. So what sort of types of, um, just two examples, there are perceived USBs, unique selling propositions, and actual. So in the first one, there is a company that have launched a beer in um, New Zealand. Um, basically, they marketed the beer, and this beer became the number one beer in there, in Australia. Sorry, um, because they have said that we are the beer that we are chill filtered beer. As a matter of fact, all beers are children. All beers are children. Mm -hmm. But no one has claimed that. Mm -hmm. And because of that, actually people started buying from them and they became number one in just six months. So this is a perceived unique selling proposition. We're gonna talk about that uh, and how you can apply it also into your uh, business. The other one, which is Guinness, They've actually um, installed a gas capsule on the top of the pack so that it actually give it a, uh, gives the beer a prop. Now, lots of brands, they have followed Guinness after that, but they were the first brand that actually gave the customer their product with that prop on top. So, there are different things for a USB that you can apply into your business. It can be Technological difference, it can be uh, tradition-based, process heritage, speed of service, flexibility, 
personalization, breadth of range, innovation, scarcity, team, environment, environmental, whatever, location. These are things which you can think of when you are actually telling customers about what you do and how you add value other than price. Price is important, but it's, it shouldn't be the only factor. It should be one of the factors that they evaluate you on. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Um, so my work is very individual based. It's based okay. on me. Okay. People buy me rather than right. else. Okay. And recommendations and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you grow a business where it's based on an individual? Okay. This will take us back to this one. So if you actually you have you want to grow that business beyond you then this is where you need to start, even if you're working for the next three years, four years, whatever, just on your own, mm. okay? So what sort of services, what sort of things that you would be offering that differentiates you from the whole? I'll give you an example about a plumber, okay? So plumbing, there was, there is not so many companies, they have a unique selling propositions for but this, this one plumber of a client of ours in, in Yorkshire, um, on the night that he was going to a ball, he was in his tuxedo. He got a call from one of his clients asking, them, uh, asking him for an emergency. They had an emergency at home uh, and they needed uh, his attention. So his wife obviously objected, but at the end of the day, he went there, it took him just five minutes, in his tuxedo, five minutes, fixed it, and went along to his door. A few days later, he started having calls. Um, are you the uh, plumber with the white tuxedo? <laughs> so that became actually his USP. So it's the plumber with the tuxedo. So all his team, when they were going actually <laughs> physically to do their jobs, they were in white tuxedo. Mm -hmm. So does this yeah. make sense? Yeah. yeah? So uh, I'm not suggesting that you wear tuxedo, but um, <laughs> you can think of something uh, different. You have a wide range of things that you can actually think of. So that, just as a self-analysis, just think of your three biggest competitors. And how do people, how do customers make a decision? On what basis? Quality, re reliability, price, speed of service, customer service, convenience, image. So whether this is something that is actually you're a one person band or you're a company, this is something that applies to all. If you are in sports, if you are a coach, if you are um, online services, if you, are, you are, if you have hair products, if you are a printer, if you are in immigration, uh, if you are in software, uh, if you are in water, if you are in cars, whatever it is, this applies to you. Excuse me, when you have a many competitors, I mean, there is a vast market, like a supermarket or something like this, which is, there are a lot of the, this type of uh, provider This is your, from experience, you would be able to know what sort of customers do you have and where do, where do they shop? You and someone else, what is your added value? You might need to really actually profile yourself and other people in order to get to your biggest competitor. <coughs> if you are a one person, uh, let's say you have a high street uh, shop, you cannot compete with Tesco because they have, let's say, uh, much uh, lower margins, they work on higher volume. So you need to actually find some sort of a difference, whether it is in delivery, whether it is in personal uh, uh, management, whatever it is. So you need to actually do a self-analysis and competitive analysis, like a SWOT analysis, strength, your strength, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And basically, this is the question that you need to ask yourself. How different are you 
run the competition. So if you are, for example, a mortgage advisor, and you are in this line of a business, what makes people buy or ask for your services rather than to the services of this mortgage advisor? What differentiates you? And if you know that, if you start working on that, then you will be able to actually implement this into your business, to attract more. So you will become more like a magnet to attract more people uh, from there. So guarantees, basically, you need to look in your industry if they offer any guarantees. If they don't, just talk about something that is in the industry. We'll talk about a couple of examples. For example, if you want to create a USB or a point of difference for any of these, for a pizza, other than the 30 minutes, or for the, um, the plumbing, or the car rental, or the dentistry. An example of what can you offer? What sort of a, uh, a USB would you think of? Um, you could hire a vehicle by the hour. That's already been done. Uh, you Discounts on future um, uses of the vehicles. You could also target younger drivers. Younger For drivers. For example, a lot of the time, um, a lot of popular companies mm -hmm. don't don't allow drivers under the age of 25 to drive their vehicles, and okay. if they do, they add so that's a that's that's a that's, a that's a nice example, yeah. Yeah. That's a niche market. Is the red color okay, uh, or do you want me to write it in black? Yeah? Okay. Um, what other things for any? The pizza, for example. More cheese than anyone else. More cheese! <laughs> <coughs> Smile! <laughs> Actually, if we're late, 15 minutes, you have a 10% off. For the car rental, instead of coming to us and waste time, we come to you and bring the car over. Plumbing, instead of charging by the hour, you can charge by the minute by a quarter of an hour. Things that are actually there, you're not like um, going to Mars, but you're actually, this is perceived. So you're actually making them believe that you're take, taking them to Mars or to the Milky Way. Milky Way. Yes, please. We give water to people to try. Okay. We uh, help them be able to find them. We're not able to. Hmm? That's okay. what we do. Okay. Oops. Anything else? It doesn't help, for example, um, dentist. You know that when I want to take my child to, uh, uh, to, to a dentist. Uh, yeah, for example, a lollipop. But that's, that's actually a delegation of taking them. But you can offer, for example, free checkups for kids. You can already get free checkups. Sorry? Children already get free checkups. But no one is claiming it. <laughs> But no one is claiming it. <laughs> it's not about actually giving something different or additional. It's actually about talking about something that is there, okay. but no one is talking about. Mm -hmm. Also, for things like, um, like kitchens, uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you could offer the kitchen for free, but you have to do a maintenance contract for six years. For example, <laughs> which in the six, six years, you do tell your maintenance contracts a little bit more. Well, uh, let's say that you buy uh, a that car. That will make your money back. Well, if, 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 whether you get a kitchen or a car or any other uh, washing machine, instead of paying, let's say, a thousand pounds for a car, uh, you get a maintenance contract for three years, which is mm -hmm. four hundred pounds a year, and then you get twelve hundred pounds instead of a thousand over time. 
Yeah, and I am going to give an example in the big sum. Okay. Because I, I do food. See, I, I love pizza, but all the pizza I've been looking is now. They should put like <coughs> some of them, gluten free, for instance. Okay. I think that will attract a lot of people. Until today, I go around. Anybody in pizza here? <laughs> huh? That's the free idea for you. Yeah. When, I, when I think about when I think about pizza, I always um, think about young people. Always think about people that don't really think much about their health. Yeah. Of course, y you can have healthy pizzas, but a lot of the time, pizzas are something that is junk food. You have it yeah. on a Friday night, or you, or if you have it every day, you're not very, you're not very health conscious. So um, when I think about pizza. Um, I think about what would taste the best on pizza. How can my pizza taste better than everyone else's pizza? Because pizza can generally taste the same. So I think it's more that it would be the niche because there's so many tools. But make sure whatever food. you're claiming, right. people have different tastes. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. Tina mentioned more cheese. Some people would request less cheese. Less cheese. <laughs> <laughs> or some people wouldn't like cheese at all. <laughs> yeah. If they are vegan or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So you have to actually propose something that appeals for all, for all. rather than just uh, appeal for some and uh, <laughs> for others to be rejected. But basically, what is the something that prevents people from actually putting a USB into their business? Yeah. It's fear. Yeah. It's actually fear. So what is your fear? And what are your ideas? We're going to go through an exercise now, do some speed marketing. And um, just um, because we have quite a few in the room, uh, we're not able to do it for everyone else. So let us do it on the category of banks. OK? So um, I would, if we can have this side of the room and this side of the room, just I'll leave these. And um, this is for, this is a pen, this is a pen. So basically, in 60 seconds, what would you look for, this, this, group would be what would you look for when you're choosing a bank okay and why would you take that decision and here this group what stops you from actually using the specific bank so if you can come around just for 10 minutes um, do this and then we will share It doesn't have to be not just anybody. Yeah, I think 
So accessibility, um, opening hours on Sunday. Uh, education on for online banking and remote handle. Uh, support for SMEs, banking okay. hours, and networking events. Oh, brilliant! Thank you. Thank you. Selina? Hello. I grew, uh, Can you come to the middle, okay. please? The yeah. topic is what stopped you from using a bank. Okay. So uh, we come up with eight points. The first one is interest rates. That's oh. one, okay. one of our concerns. Right. So monthly charges. Uh -huh. Number three is the ob overcharge. Okay. Overdraft. Overdraft. Charge. Okay. And then uh, unhelpful staff or services. Uh -huh. That's our concern. Okay. And then lacking online banking service. Mm -hmm. That's one of the concerns. Yeah. And then um, <coughs> lack of personal service. Mm -hmm. And also we think security and stability of bank is our part major concern. Major okay. concern. And then of course uh, flexible uh, open hours that would okay. So you mean rigid? Uh, <laughs> that would stop you <laughs> is there a, a, a rigid or non-flexibility? Non-flexibility. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Selena. Thank you so much. And this is something that you actually can do into your business. You just need to sit down and write the things that will actually, what would make your customers buy into you, or what would make your customers actually go to your competition. So, um, <coughs> yeah. So some tips about a, um, a USB or a guarantee, it's uh, make it honest. Simply guarantee what you can deliver consistently. It's about consistency. It's, about not, it's not about delivering it today and not tomorrow. It's about delivering it today, tomorrow, day after, and forever. <coughs> Get the team on board. So actually, if you have a team with you, they should buy into your vision and they should implement it. You should also inspect it to make sure that it is actually delivered. 
because that is not affecting only your brand, it's affecting your life, it's affecting also their jobs and their continuity. You would like people with you that share your vision so that they can roll with you to reach that specific destination. Um, don't guarantee something unless it has a client-focused value. Consider we beat the basic fees, client demands guarantees, consider top-end rewards for exceeding expectation. If you are in a project-based services, avoid last-minute bad issues. Who qualifies for the guarantee? Make the selection process robust enough to work for you, not the client. It should work for you because you are the one who is offered. And finally, don't just argue when it goes wrong. Admit it, reward it, give it, give back, and make use of it on your social media because that would give you what? Credibility and exposure, yes. You are credible. It's not like I offer you the guarantee as long as it works for me, and if it doesn't work, then, excuse me, the F word. Fool, you are, huh? okay? No. If it doesn't work, actually, yes, things happen. We actually acknowledge the problem. This is something that we will work on, and here's our guarantee. So basically, again, how we can help you. I've talked about the different products. Uh, the training workshops, Action Club, which is the group coaching, Growth Club, which is the 90-day planning, and the one-to-one -one coaching. So what is a Growth Club? It's actually, uh, it's a one day where you develop your strategies, we help you master your time, be clear on your priorities, and equip you with the mindset tools you need to achieve your goals. One-day planning, this is something that we, can, we are doing on a quarterly basis, where we map your uh, next 90 days, this is like you're doing your vision for 2020. Um, you have the access to an action coach, business coach, uh, basically me. You learn from more than 350 strategies that can be implemented in your business, not in just in other businesses. Broaden your sphere with contact by networking like your good selves, uh, with other business owners in the room. It includes uh, coffee breaks and lunch. And you also get the credits. So it is a CPD credited. So you get the certificate, uh, an action course certificate with the uh, actual credits of CPD into it. And all of the above is for 295 pounds. Is that so per, per year or per quarter? Per, per day. Per day, no. Okay. Um, so basically, what are the, we're gonna take, talk to you about the magic five ways that you are going to use some of them, uh, and you will have access to those strategies in the growth club. And these are things actually that you can implement into your business now, from this second. Um, what is a profit? It's the turnover minus your total costs. Um, don't forget to factor as a cost, some services may carry a better margin. So you will have some services with a better margin, with a worse margin, which we're gonna, um, create some scenarios. We might run a little bit more than 11.35, probably about another five to 10 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Um, what is your golden, which one is the golden egg into your business? So if you have more than one product, which is the product that is generating most of the profits or the money into your business? And um, can you preferentially market these services, products relevant on uh, buying audiences. Remember, what we're gonna talk about is the five ways. Um, have, um, anybody knows what is the five ways? Other than two people, three people in the room? Yeah, okay, we're gonna talk about it. So what are the five ways into your business? How many customers do you have? What is the revenue and how much profit that you make? Do you think that who agrees with me that these are the most important factors in a business? Not sure? Raise your hand! Okay, 
So who would like to have more customers? Ah, it's better. Okay, can you raise your hand higher if you want more revenue? Yeah, and who has who would like to have more profits? Oh, everybody, that's great. Actually, these are things that you are out of your control. These are things that you can't really get more of. But what you can do is that you can increase the factors that lead to that. These are end results. You cannot control. But this is where we're going to talk about what leads to that. So the five ways are the number of leads, the conversion rate, the number of transactions, the average sale that give us the revenue, and then our profit margins that would give us our profits. Yeah. So the number of leads, these are the leads, these are not suspects. So your suspects is the whole world, or prospects are the whole world. The leads are people who have actually contacted you or you have contacted them. Okay? And the people who become customers, this is the percentage of those leads who have actually converted. Thus, there is a conversion rate, which is, let us consider it as a 25%. It might differ from one business to another, but this is the conversion rate. That would give you your customers. So 25% out of 4,000, let's say 1,000 customers. And then your customers, actually, they, how many times do they buy from you? Do they buy once? And then, okay, thank you for buying. Good night. Bye-bye. Or you actually try to work with them for, to help them buy more of your products. And then what is the average sale? The average sale of your product, of the services or the products that they buy from you, whether they buy for 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 1,000 pounds, that's the average what we, what we look at. So how you can increase that? And then that would give you your total revenue, which is 200,000, let's say. And if you have a margin of 25%, that would give you a gross profit of So what we teach you is through these 350 different strategies is how you can have a little bit of an increase that would lead to massive results. So if you can just, we're not looking for increasing your business by 100%. If we increase your business by 100%, what would that mean? Any thoughts? Take over. Take over. <laughs> Early retirement. Early retirement. What else? More staff. staff. More staff. Change staff. Change staff. Change soul. Change soul. So Actually, sometimes it's ending up the business. Because exactly, it could end to bankruptcy, basically. Why? Because we're not ready for it. If you want to increase your business by 100%, you might be able to do it. But are you ready for it? One. Do you have the right cash flow for it? Do you have the right training for it, for your staff? Do you have the right staff, trained staff? And do you have the right delivery? If you're delivering consistently in a perfect way or in a good way, McDonald's, do they offer the best burger in the world? But they do offer the most consistent burger in the world. So basically, it's how you can provide those products consistently without affecting. So we're looking at 10%, just a simple 10% increase across the five ways, which would lead, which would move the, um, the, uh, the revenue from 200 to 292,000 which is a 47% increase into your revenue. Is this what we are looking for? Is this what we are interested in? No. Not really. <coughs> we don't want to have more customers. We want to have more grade A and grade B customers. We want to have more profits. 
But in this way, we will increase our profits not only by 47%, we will increase it by 61%. Oh. And this is our gain. Well, what's the overhead increase that you factored in there? Um, just 10%. Of, of increased overhead? This is by 10%. So, okay, let us look at it a little bit differently. If you're running a business now with a revenue of 100,000, okay? Mm -hmm. By just taking more ten, a ten, an additional 10%, do you need to recruit more staff at this stage? Yeah. It depends where you're at at the moment, doesn't it? Whether you're, you're but usually, if you, are, if you are operating comfortably today mm. at 100%, let's say, are you actually utilizing your time by 100%? Not really. No. So you can always take an additional 10%. I'm not talking 50% where you would need stuff and cash flow and all of that. It's just a simple 10%. There are, when we look in here about these percentages, 10%, there are specific elements, whether it is the lead, conversion, transaction, sale, or profit, you might not be able to increase it, but it's more of a compound effect across all. And this is where you achieve an 80,000, which is a 61% increase or your actual profit. This is a gross. So if we look at this, it's an example about hairdressing, okay? We have two products. Is it clear for all? Can you see it? Yeah. Should be visible. So if we have, from the women hairdressing, we have 540 leads mm -hmm. with a conversion rate of 74%. We have 400 customers with 2.5 transactions per month or per year, whatever it is. And with an average sale of 45 pounds, that would give us a turnover of 44,955. With a margin of 55%, that is 24,000. Similarly for the men dress, hairdressing and for product sale. So if we look at this, what is the first thing that we look at in these five ways? What is the one thing that you as a business owner look at in your products or in your business? What is the first thing that you look at? Profits. Profits. So which one has the highest profit? Service for women. Service for yeah, men. Sorry. <coughs> 65%. Let us see the scenario if we increase just 100 leads to men. So if we increase the from 57 to uh, for the men servicing by 157, then we have an additional 1,900 pounds into our business. Okay, which is the conversion is 65 and this is 55. Let us see if we add the hundred leads to the women rather than to the men. So the 24,000, we have an additional. 4,600 pounds into the business, even though it has a less margin. Because basically what we look at, this is what this might be deceiving, the margin. We, look, we need to look at the number of transactions and the average sale, because the repetitiveness of the business as well. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of testimonials. I'll start with uh, Bieri, she's not in the room. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Vieri. I run two businesses and I've been with Action Coach and Kalia for about three months now. Now, did he make me to save money? Yes, definitely. My main problem was I didn't focus on conversion leads. I didn't know where my business was coming from, and even if I did, if it made me money and how much money it made. Uh, what Khalil did, he made me to realize what is the conversion rate of my leads, and where I'm losing money, what projects are not profitable, and where I should focus. So, yeah, thank you for making me realize these essentials. I'm sure I'm not the only one who is struggling, and I'm looking forward to next sessions. 
Thank you, Mary. And this is another testimonial about Action Club so, from hi, Jan. Uh, thank you for uh, being here today. And thank you for joining uh, Action Club. If you can introduce yourself, uh, tell us why you have joined Action Club and what sort of benefit you have got out of the few sessions that you have attended. Very good. Uh, my name is Jan Gilles van Delsen. I uh, run a uh, business to uh, the product, it's, it's uh, selling uh, a, or marketing a uh, licensed product, uh, licensed sales of software, and uh, I was struggling to uh, set up the business and uh, make it run very, uh, very quickly in a short period of time, and uh, I needed some help with that. So I decided to work with Khalil, uh, from Action Coach, and uh, joined the Growth Club uh, to make sure that I built the right routines, that I built the right uh, behaviors, uh, and get the advice on a regular basis on uh, how I can improve the, the different metrics that make my business work. Mm -hmm. And then from the Growth Club, why did you decide to join the Action Club? Uh, from the Growth Club to the Action Club was for me. Uh, so I can, on a regular basis, kind of make sure that uh, I keep the momentum going. Uh, it's not just about a one-off or, or every 90 days. It's really making sure that I can, on a regular basis, get the, the sandboarding, the feedback, uh, and also making sure that um, uh, there's a growth path, not only in my business, but also in my knowledge and in my skills. Excellent. And how are you finding the first session? Hi, my name is Mary. I run two businesses so, and I've been sorry. with Action Coach and Kalia for about three months now. Okay. So, again, thank you, Jan. Um, how do you plan your last quarter, October, November, December? How do you make sure that you meet your target? Because lots of Business owners, they do a business plan. Why? Who can tell me why do they do a business plan? Huh? Or? Focus. Or? Finance. Or finance. To go to the bank and, yeah, Mr. Bank, this is my plan. Can you give me a loan? Or can you give me an overdraft? Or whatever it is. And after that, what happens? Turns it broke. No one looks at it. Yeah, I've done a, a business plan three years ago. Oh, great. So how can you make sure that you achieve that growth that is written on the business plan? It's by making sure that you meet your 90-day plans. Again, as a thank you note to NatWest, the Growth Club, again, develop strategies that will help you master your time, be clear about your priorities, and equip you with the mindset and tools you need to achieve your goals. One-day planning, it's uh, done on in each quarter, but this is for the one day access to an action coach, learn from the 350 strategies, broaden your sphere of contacts by networking, coffee, lunch, CPD credits, uh, certificate, all the above for 